This is the first section of chapter eight on modeling and mechanics. And this section is about constructing a model. Now, what we want to do when we construct a, a model in mathematics is we want to take a real life situation and apply some sort of model to it. Now that model may be an equation or a formula. So first of all, we would observe what the problem is in the world, real world. So for example, this might be trying to calculate uh, the distance that a tennis ball goes after the tennis player has hit it. So then we would set up our mathematical model, but we might need to make some assumptions. So for example, we may assume that the ball isn't spinning. We may ignore uh, wind resistance. We may make some assumptions about the type of tennis racket and the type of uh, surface, the type of uh, materials the tennis ball is, is made of. And then we need to set up some variables. So these variables might be, for example, the force at which the tennis player hits the ball. The ball or the speed at which the ball is traveling towards the tennis player. Then we would solve our equations and then interpret the results that we get. Then we'd look at our results and see, are the results sensible? So for example, uh, let's go back to the example of a tennis player hitting a ball. I may work out my results and get that the ball ends up traveling 500 meters. Now I know that's not sensible. Now if I do get a sensible result, then I can just write out my results and solutions and end there. But normally, in the first time round, when we've simplified things, we may not get um, sensible results. So we need to refine the model by reconsidering the assumptions that we made. So I may now decide to in include air resistance or uh, include the ball's spin. And then we go back and we improve our model. And it's about going around this cycle here until we get results that are sensible that we're happy with at the end. So we'll be carrying out this process quite a lot when we're dealing with questions in mechanics, questions to do with uh, forces, masses, acceleration, velocity, speed, distance, etc. Example one, the motion of a basketball as it leaves a player's hand and passes through the net can be modelled using this equation here, h equals 2 plus 1.1x uh, 1 .1 minus 0.1x squared, where h is the height of the basketball above the ground, and x is the horizontal distance travelled. Part a, and there are two parts to part a, we want to find the height of the basketball ball uh, the, part, the first part when it's released and then at a horizontal distance of 0.5 meters. So the basketball is released when x is zero. So that's what we put into the equation. H equals two plus 1.1 times zero minus 0.1 times zero squared. So that just gives the height is two meters. And the second part of part A at a horizontal distance of 0.5 meters. So that means X is 0.5. So now the formula or the equation is going to be 2 plus 1.1 times 0.5 minus 0.1 times 0.5 squared. So that value of H gives us 2.5 525 meters. Now we could round this to three significant figures um, as 2.53, but since it's only three decimal places, we can leave the answer exact like that. Part B, use the model to predict the height of the basketball when it is at a horizontal distance of 15 meters from the player. So here X is going to be 15. So we substitute that into the equation, h equals 2 plus 1.1 times 15 minus 0.1 times 15 squared. Okay, that gives a height of negative four meters. Now it's not incorrect, 
but maybe that tells us something about our model. So part C, comment on the validity of this prediction. Well, obviously we can't have a negative height. That would mean it would be below the ground. So that means that this model isn't suitable for a um, horizontal distance of 15 meters. Now, what we could do, and we're not asked to do it in this question, we could work out the value of X, uh, the maximum value of X for which this model is suitable. So maybe what we'd do would make H equal to zero and work out that value of X, and that will tell us the maximum uh, horizontal distance for which this model is valid. So you should now be able to do exercise 9A on pages 119 to 120 of the textbook.